Welcome to our advanced exploration of Microsoft Excel. In this video, we'll show you the chart wizard for adding charts to your spreadsheets. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk you through the chart wizard. And what it does is it allows you to fairly easily add charts to your Excel spreadsheets. And the charts, of course, grab their data from the spreadsheets. And I say fairly easy. It's fairly easy once you get the hang of it, but in the first instance, it can be a little confusing to deal with. And some of the information it requests in quite a cryptic way, as you'll see. But once you become familiar with it, obviously, it will become quite easy. So first of all, insert menu, chart, and OK, Chart Wizard, step one of four, so very easy at the beginning. You can choose what sort of chart you want, so column, and there are even subtypes. You can have this one or any of these. Or bar charts, line charts, pie charts, and so on. And if you go to Custom Type, you can use this to create custom charts. If we take a look at this, you can use area blocks. It looks like that. Black and white area. Looks like that. So you can play around with those as well and see which ones you like. But for this example, let's stick with something basic. Let's stick with a column chart. OK, and next. And now it's asking you for the data range. Basically, which data are you going to use to create this chart? And if I move this out of the way, you can see that it made an automatic selection of this entire table, but it's really not what we want. I don't think that would make the most meaningful data for a chart. We really want more of a subset of the total data. So you can enter there manually. Or if you click here, it tucks the wizard out of the way temporarily, and you can click, hold, and drag the data area. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag that. Really, I want to create a chart in this example that shows how the price changes the more copies of each item are created. And OK, that's actually the text for this selection. So equals sheet 1, exclamation point, dollar C, dollar 18, colon, dollar H, dollar 21. So if you want to, you can spend time deciphering what it creates and becoming familiar with that. Or more easily, you can just click, hold, and drag and use the mouse for selecting. And when you're done, click this, and it brings the wizard back and you have your data range there. Then, importantly, do you want your data series in rows or columns? OK, what I really want to do in this chart is, as I mentioned, make it clear how the price goes down the more copies are duplicated. So really, I would say that what it's chosen by default would work well. On the right here, what's known as the legend of the chart, I could have blue, well, it says Series 1 by default, but that would be 25 copies. And the next one, 50 copies, 100 copies, 200 copies, and so on. Then the column would wind up right next to each other, so it's very clear to see. So I'm going to stick with Series in columns, whereas I could choose Series in rows, and it presents the data in quite a different way. It's four columns here now, four numbered columns, and one of these is DVDs, one of these is CDs, one of them is inserts, the column that doesn't exist is inserts because the value on inserts is always zero, and fulfillment is always 10. So actually it's just the same data presented in a different way, so it depends on how you want it presented. So if I wanted to, OK, here I could say DVDs $5. You know, I would need to look for the blue column, and then I would need to look across the entire chart. 
whereas if I chose the columns value for this, it bunches all the DVD prices next to each other, all the CD prices next to each other, the insert prices next to each other, which is obviously zero in every instance, and the fulfillment values next to each other, which is always 10. So it just depends on how you want to present it. Next, if you go to the Series tab, and this is where you change the text here. So Series 1 is 25 copies. Select Series 2, and actually the values, it's grabbing the data that column is from as shown here. You can change that if you want to, but we don't need to. Series 2 is, okay, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1,000, so 50 copies. Series 3, and you see the text changes here as we do this, 100 copies. Series 4, 200 copies. Series 5, 500 copies. And finally, if we scroll down, Series 6, 1,000 copies. So you see the legend has changed here, just in the preview. OK, then Category X, Axis Labels. OK, what it's trying to say there is what text do you want here for these labels at the bottom of the chart? 1, 2, 3, 4 isn't particularly helpful. In this instance, we'd want DVDs, CDs, inserts, and fulfillment. And you can do it by clicking this button again. Selecting the text. So I've selected four cells for that text. Then bring it back. And then you see this is what it returns when you make that selection. And it automatically labels the sections of the chart, DVDs, CDs, inserts, and fulfillment. Or alternatively, you could do it yourself. If we delete that, you can type in, let's say, A comma, B comma, C comma, and D comma, and if I just tab away, hopefully the changes will take effect, and they do. So if you want to do it manually, you just put a comma between each one. You can type in any text. So I could type in DVDs, comma, CD, comma, inserts, comma, and fulfillment. And tab. And there we go. It's added that text. So DVDs, CDs, inserts, fulfillment. OK, we're done with this text. So next, Chart Wizard, Step 3 of 4, Chart Title. Let's say Price Change. OK, let's say instead Price Change on Items Duplicated. That will probably do. And if you wish, you can add some specific text that appears here. Category X axis. For example, we can specify item type. So there we go, item type. Y axis, price. And the different tabs on this screen, there are a bunch of other options you can customize. Axes, Primary Axis, Category X Axis, and if we just quickly play around with these to see what changes it makes, if we disable that, it removes the labels from this, the X Axis. Click it, and it brings it back. Change it to Time Scale, for example, and this becomes Dates, So take it back to automatic. OK, value Y axis. If we disable that, 
the price disappears from the y-axis, from the vertical part of the chart. So, okay, let's bring that back. Then grid lines. Major grid lines look like that. And let's keep them in this example. Then minor grid lines. It gets somewhat cluttered when you do that, so let's just get rid of those. Then major grid lines on the y-axis. So if we get rid of those, so enable grid lines on the vertical axis, yes or no. We can leave those, but the minor grid lines get very, very cluttered. But let's leave them in for now to see how it looks in the final chart. Legend. Okay, show legend. Disable that and the legend disappears. But I find that it's best to keep it in in this instance. And you can change the placement. Bottom, corner. Okay, that doesn't work. Top, right, and left. Leave it at the bottom in this example. Okay, data labels. Currently none, but if we add show value, it shows the numbers next to each column. So it does make it a lot more cluttered, but also perhaps somewhat more helpful. But let's disable that for now because actually it does make it quite cluttered. Finally, data table. Show data table, yes or no. If we enable that, that basically brings in the spreadsheet right next to the chart. So that doesn't seem very easy to read at all, so let's not have that in this example. And next, we're just about to add it. You can add it as a new sheet, as a worksheet, or as an object in the existing worksheet, or spreadsheet rather. So let's say as a new sheet, and let's finish. And OK, that's done. And here's our new worksheet. And I should have specified it is a worksheet because it gets added as a new sheet as part of the overall spreadsheet. So we're still working in the demo.xls spreadsheet, but it's been added as the chart one worksheet within the spreadsheet. And this is how it looks a visual representation of the data from the spreadsheet. So actually, let's just move this toolbar out of the way. So DVDs, and actually the legend is here, and that can probably be increased in size. Click, hold, and drag to increase that. And the text here can be selected. And we can just change that easily if we wish. Or select it and move it around. And if we select it, select the text. Let's take a stab at changing the font size. So that can be done as well. So there's a lot of flexibility there even after you've created the chart. So now we have a visual representation. 25 copies column is in blue and so it's in euros in this example because I changed the dollar values to euros. 50 copies and this is the DVD section of the chart. This is 50 copies. 100 copies, 3 euros, and so on. And as we round out this video, a very important point is that these charts stay linked to the data that's in the spreadsheet or in the appropriate worksheets. So this is how it looks now. If I go back to sheet 1, which is the main spreadsheet I've been using for these examples, Let's change some values. Let's change the inserts to, let's say, to 20, 16, 12, 8, 
4, and 1 for the sake of this example. Now, going back to the chart, and suddenly we have data in the insert column, and the value axis, as it's called, the numbers have changed and increased here accordingly. So they now support, they now go up to 20. So any changes made to the spreadsheet have an immediate effect on the chart, as you can see. And even though the chart is pretty much done, it can still be changed. And if you just click on the chart, actually when it appears like this, when you have multiple selections down the edges, you've actually selected the grid lines. And you want to click between the grid lines so that, as you can see, the entire chart is actually selected. Let's try that again. Select the entire chart, right click, and we can change our options. So if we change chart type, let's go to a pie chart, and let's try a 3D one. And OK that, and there we go. OK, not particularly helpful because it doesn't actually give us figures. So we can right click, chart type, and OK, let's not. Let's stick with the pie chart and make a couple more changes. Right click, source data, we shouldn't need to change. Let's look in series, and OK, that all looks OK. Right click, chart options. OK, I've gone to the Data Labels tab, and in this instance, it might make sense to show their value. So I can just keep playing around with this and see what works for this type of chart. But if we quickly just go back to Chart Types, go back to Column, OK, we're back exactly as that was, and I find that works very well to present this sort of data very clearly. So that's how you can start adding charts and working with charts for your Excel spreadsheets.